In today's lesson video, we're going to be taking a look at non-unit fractions. So a non-unit fraction is where the number at the top of the fraction, our numerators, it's where they are larger than one, where they're not one. So instead of one quarter, we have three quarters. Instead of one third, we have two thirds and so on. Let's recap on what a fraction actually is. So a fraction is part of something, it's less than a whole, and that whole is um, something, a complete, a complete one, a complete set of objects, um, a complete value. Don't confuse the word whole with a hole in your socks or a hole in the ground. I see lots of people get confused when we say it's less than a whole. It's a whole of something, a complete something. Um, or it's a proportion of a set of objects. Um, a picture, or it could be a quantity, so a number, an amount of money. So let's recap with our different parts of the fraction. The top number in our fraction, the number that sits above the fraction line or the vinculum, the top number is called our numerator. Our numerator tells us how many of the equal parts we are looking at. The equal parts are the denominator. So our denominator is the number under the fraction line, under the vinculum. The bottom number in our fraction is the denominator. And the denominator is the number we want to look at first when we're looking at fractions. We look at that, fra that number first because it tells us how many equal parts our whole is shared into. So remember, our whole might be a number could be a set of objects, um, it could be a picture. How many equal parts is that set of objects, that picture or that number being shared into? And the important bit is that the parts are equal. So with our three quarters, whatever we're looking at, whether it be a box of chocolates, um, 10 pounds or a picture, that set of objects, money or um, picture is divided into four equal parts. And then the three at the top tells us that we're looking at three of those equal parts. So to recap with fractions, the numerator and the denominator tell us how many equal parts we want to share our whole into and then how many of the equal parts we are looking at in our problem. So we're going to start by looking at three quarters. So the three quarters tells us that we want four equal parts and that we are looking at three of those parts. So for example, if I wanted to look at three quarters of my group of cars here, I first of all need to look at my denominator. My denominator is four. It tells me that we're looking at four equal parts. So I might want to first think about how I could um, divide or share my objects into four equal parts. Now I can see that I could do this. There's four columns of cars there. So that's how I've shared my set of objects into quarters first of all. So this is one quarter, this is two quarters, this is three quarters, this is four quarters. I want to look at three quarters. So I need three of my quarters. So if I was asked to circle three quarters of my set of objects, I would simply do that. I'd put a circle around three of the quarters. I first find quarters, I share it into four, and then I'd identify three of those quarters. You might be asked to count how many is in three quarters, but in the activity on your worksheet, you just simply need to identify. So it could be to circle them, shade them in, um, however you want to do it. Now on your worksheet, if you were to have done something similar to this and say you circled this and then you circled that, that is still three quarters. You still have identified nine. So on the worksheet, when you look at the answers, I have circled the correct fraction, but I've also written the number next to it. So as long as your circle or your ticking 
of the shapes has the same number as mine, then your answer is correct. You don't necessarily need to have circled the same ones. So for example, I could have also circled those. It's still correct. Okay. In the next one, we want to find three quarters of a bar. So here again, I need to first separate it into four equal parts. I have my denominator of four, I want to separate it into four equal parts. So if I wasn't sure how to do that straight away, I might just give it a guess. So for example, I might say, oh, maybe there's one. So if I do this and just check if there was one in each part, well, there's still quite a lot left, isn't there? So I might then say, what about if there were two in each group? They have to be equal, so if you decide one group is worth two, then they all need to be worth two. And I can see actually, yeah, that works. One, two, three, four. So you first want to find your four equal groups. When you are happy that they are all equal groups, which I'm happy that they're all equal groups, I need to find, so I've done that, I need to now find three quarters. So I need one, two and three. I need three of the quarters and I would just shade those in. Okay, so you may shade them in, you may um, be asked to write the number on the worksheet I've given you. Can you please shade them in and perhaps also write the number? So here I have six, my answer is six. As the question before, you may not have done those three, you may have done these three, that's fine. Or you may not have set it out like I have um, done. So you may have shaded it like that. You may not have set it out like that at all. You may have just coloured in six. Maybe you've done one, two, three and left one blank. One, two, three and left one blank. That's fine as well because you've still here, you've shown me three out of four. And here you've shown me three out of four. If you have shaded six in, then you have still identified three quarters. Let's have a look at three quarters of a grid now. Now with this grid, um, you could shade in, for example, three, leave one blank, three, leave one blank, three, leave one blank. But I want you to start to um, think in a bit of a different way. Now with a quarter, quarters are always half of a half. So when you're working with quarters, always try and see if you can find half of your shape first. Okay, so there's two places I might find the half. I could find my half this way, or I could find my half this way. So once I've halved my shape, I need to halve it again. So I'm actually going to use the first half. So I've halved it and I've halved it. So I now have one, two, three, four quarters there. I need to identify three of those. So I would simply shade in one quarter, two quarters and three quarters. So I found three quarters of my shape. Now, if you also were to add them up, I can see I have nine in each of my quarters. So nine, 18, 27. If you also write the number, because you may have shaded your shape slightly different to I've shaded my shape, and you could have shaded it like this, for example. Um, as long as you have the same number shaded as I have, then your answer is correct. Let's move on now to another fraction. Let's look at two thirds. So with thirds, we want to be sharing our items or values into three. And then we want to look at two of those items. So I have a group of ice creams here. I've got two thirds, that's telling me I first need to share into three groups. So I'm simply going to make three groups make one down here so I'm going to share my ice creams out into three piles remember I need to make sure at the end that they're all equal so once you've shared them out once you've decided how many goes into each group 
Obviously, you can't move your ice creams on your um, sheet, but you could draw them out again. You could use resources or you might use your times table knowledge, which is what the goal is. The ultimate goal is to move to your times table knowledge. But I'm going to show you how to do it like this first to build your understanding. If you can already use your times table knowledge, then do that, please. So let's just check each pile. One, two, three, four, five. 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 I'm happy that I have three equal groups. Now I need two of my equal groups. So I need to combine two groups together. So I'm going to move this group down with this group because I need two thirds. And that is my answer. So I have 10 as my answer. So on the worksheet, when you identify the fraction of the group of the um, group of objects, you if you could circle them or tick them, you may have circled or ticked your objects in a different way to I have on my answer sheet. But just check that the numbers match up. If the numbers match up, then your answer is correct. Let's move on to a bar. So two thirds. I need to share. How many equal parts? There's three equal parts. Like before, if you aren't sure, give it a guess. So could my bar be split into groups of two? Well, I've already got my three groups and I've got some left over. So two wasn't big enough. So let's try three. And again, you may not need to do this. You may have counted the bar and seen there's nine in my bar. It needs to be shared into three groups. What is nine divided by three? And you may be able to do that. But if you're not able to do that straight away, then learn the, sort of the trial and improvement method because then you've always got something to fall back on. So I am happy that my three groups are equal. They are equal, so I'm happy. I need two of my groups. So I need to identify two of my groups I need to combine the two thirds together there, two of my thirds, and shade in. So you could have done a different section. You could have done this section and shaded all of that in. You may even have shaded two left one blank, shaded two, left one blank, shaded two, left one blank. So here you're showing two thirds, here you're showing two thirds, here you're showing two thirds. Okay, still two thirds. Every way that you might do it, you should end up with six shaded in. So as long as your bar has the same amount shaded as mine does on the answer sheet, then you are correct. What about two thirds on a grid? So you need to figure out, first of all, how to divide your grid into three. So what I would suggest is to count your rows and your columns. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six going up that way. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six going that way. Now six can be divided by three. And six divided by three is two. So if I just took a row or a column, so I'm gonna start with a row, I could think about my, just like we did with the bar model, if I just rub this out, I'll rub that out in, as well. If I just ignore these um, bits at the bottom, I'm just going to look at this row at the top, like I did with the bar model a moment ago, can I separate it into three groups? And yes, I can. There is my three groups. So I could actually think about, rather than that's one third, and that's two third, I could think about the whole columns. All of those two columns are one third, and all of these columns are two thirds. Okay, so that's one way you could do it. If you were working with your rows, you could try and separate those. So one, two, three. I've got three groups. Each group has two rows in it. 
So again, I can do all of that section is one third and all of that section is two thirds. Doesn't really matter which way you did it. In both instances, I have six, 12, 18, 24. As long as your number is the same. Okay, now you could have gone one, two, miss one. One, two, miss one. One, two, miss one. One, two, miss one. I'm doing that two and miss one because that's two coloured. The third one isn't. That's two thirds. You'll notice when I do that, I just end up with the same thing that I had a moment ago. Okay, so just explore and you will start to find that the more you do it, the more confident you get with spotting a way to share your, your groups or your images into thirds or quarters or fifths or whatever you've been asked. So just make sure that the number you've shaded matches the number that I write on the answer, sh answer sheet. Your shading does not need to look like my shading, but the number of shaded squares needs to match mine. So we're going to move on to four tenths now. So with four tenths, we need to divide by 10, share by 10, and then we need to look at four of those groups. So I'm going to start by putting all of my cookies into the middle, and then I'm going to share them into 10 groups. So if you would like to use um, this kind of method where you use an object, obviously it would be quite hard work to cut the cookies out, so use something else. So if you're working with the fractions, um, you you know you probably won't have place value counters at home, but you might have counters that you use on a board game. You could use Lego bricks. Um, you could use pencils. You could use pennies if you've got pennies. So you could take the amount that are on the worksheet and replace those with your pennies or your Lego, and then you could use those to work with your fractions. So for example, if you replaced all of these cookies with a penny or a Lego brick or a counter, and then we can separate them into 10 piles. So I'm gonna make my 10 piles first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I'm going to share them round into the, so making sure that I definitely have ten groups and that I'm definitely going to end up with equal amounts, so I need to check at the end, I need to check that I've got ten groups and I need to check that the ten groups are all equal, so, so far Everyone's got two, we're now starting to put three into each group. And as I said before, you may not need to do this. You may have counted the cookies and already knew if you divided that by 10, if you shared it into 10 groups, you would have already, you might have already known how many is in each group. So let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten groups. Definitely 10 groups, and I can see there's three in every group, so I'm happy that I've got an equal amount. Now, I want four of my groups. I want four of my tenths, so I need to combine four together. So that's one group, two groups, three groups, and my fourth group, put them all together one stayed behind there, all together, and now I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So four tenths of that group of cookies, there were 30 cookies all together, four tenths of my 30 cookies was 12. So on your worksheet, if this was on your worksheet, you would have circled 12 cookies. When you check the answers, if your image is different to my image, it does not matter as long as the amount in your image is the same as the amount in my image. So I might have circled 12 cookies on the left-hand side. You might have circled them on the right-hand side. You might have circled them individually. As long as the number is the same, then your answer is correct. Let's move on to a bar model. So four tenths means that I need my 
10 equal groups first. Always look at your denominator first. I need to share my bar into 10 equal groups. Now let's count how many is in my bar. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to share my bar into 10 and there's only 10 squares. So that means there's going to be one in every group. Okay, you don't necessarily need to do this. I'm just doing this to help build an understanding. So I have shared my bar into 10 groups. I can definitely see that there's 10 because I've labeled them and I can definitely see that all equal, there's one square in each group. So now I want to look at four of those groups. So I want four of the groups together. That is four of my tenths and I would shade those in. And there are four squares in my four tenths. So as before, your four tenths could have been these four. It could have been these four. Doesn't really matter, it's still four squares. Okay, you may have got four squares in different places throughout the bar. As long as what shaded adds up to four and matches my answer, then that is fine. So on your answer sheet, always be checking for the amount that you've shaded in or circled or ticked. Let's have a look at a grid. So like with the thirds, what I would suggest is before you start trying to find, oops, trying to share an image like this is to count how many rows and columns you've got. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there is ten that way. And I would just treat it as a bar or a row to begin with. So I'm almost going to just ignore all of this below and just look at the bar. So if I wanted to share that row into 10, just like I did with the bar before it, I know that actually I'm just gonna have one in each group. And if you're not sure, label it. I'm confident that I have separated that top row into 10 equal parts. There is one square in each of those um, groups, in each of the 10 groups. And I just want four of them. I want one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. Okay. Now, what applies to that row is going to apply to all the other rows. They're going to be the same because this row below, below it is exactly the same size, it's the same width, so that's tenths as well. So I actually know that's also four tenths, that's also four tenths, that's also four tenths, and actually all of it below is four tenths. So when you're coming to a grid like that, it might be helpful just to think about one row or column. You could also have done it using the columns, each of these would be a group by itself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, always check, get a theory, but always check it, it's definitely ten rows, which means one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenths, so I've got four coloured in, six left blank, so that's four, out of my 10 in that column. It's gonna be the same in the next column, isn't it? Because it's the same size. So I can actually just do this now. And it will all... So that is another way of showing four tenths. And um, the number that it equals is 40. There's 10 in every row and there's four rows. And before there was 10 in every column and four columns. So both ways make 40. So the circled number is what you're looking for in your answer sheet. It doesn't matter if the shading is different. So on to five sevenths now. 
and we're also going to look at four ninths. So here I want you to find four ninths of the football. So the first thing we need to do is to share into nine groups. So let's pop the footballs together. Um, and like I said before, you might use pennies, counters, Lego, screwed up bits of paper, whatever you want. You can use something to represent these footballs. So I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15. There's 18 footballs. So you would use 18 pennies or 18 counters. If you want to pause the video now and, and go and get 18 objects, you could do this along with me. So I'm going to put all the footballs together first. And I'm now going to um, share them into nine equal groups. So let's make nine piles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. So remembering um, that I need to make sure at the end that every group has an equal amount and that there are definitely nine groups. We're going to double check now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm happy that there are nine groups. I'm also happy that they're equal. I can see there's two in every group. And now I need to make sure that I have four of my groups together. So one group, two groups, three groups, four groups. So I've got my four groups all together and let's count how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four ninths of my um, 18 was eight. So just check that the number that you circle on your worksheet matches the number that I circle. Remember, you might circle it, tick it, whatever you want to do, or you might just write the number. So let's have a look with the footballs again, but let's this time look at five sevenths. So again, if you want to join in with me, then go ahead. We have three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen footballs this time. I'm going to start by putting all of my footballs together. And then I'm going to put them into seven separate groups. So I'm going to make my seven separate piles. Four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to then carry on sharing the footballs out into the seven groups until I have none left. And then afterwards, I need to check. Do I have seven groups? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm happy that I have my seven groups. I have definitely shared them into seven. And they're also all equal groups. There's two in every group. I'm happy with that. I now need to look at my number five. I need to put five of these groups together. So there's one group. There's two of the groups. Oh, I want to bring that one back. Three of my groups, four of my groups, five of my groups. That should make sense. There's five of my seven groups here and there's two of my seven groups left. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my five sevenths of the 14 is 10. So check the number against the number that you put on your worksheet. Remember, you may have circled or ticked different um, image to the one I have done. Just make sure the numbers match up. So what about with a bar model then? If I want to find five sevenths of this bar model. So remember, the first thing we do is we always divide into equal parts. And we look at our denominator. So I might guess here, I might say, so you might count and use your times table. That's perfect. That's what we want to head to. If you don't know how to do that yet, this is what you would do. I might give it a guess. I think that it's definitely going to be bigger than one square in seven groups because that's quite a long bar. So I, what about two? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've made seven equal groups of two, but there's still a load of bar left. 
So I'm going to try three in each group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it works. I've got seven groups and each group has three squares in it. I am happy that I've divided by seven. Now I need to look at my denominator, my, uh, my numerator, sorry, my numerator is five. I need five of my groups. So I need one, two, three, four, and five groups. I need five of my sevenths. And I would shade all of those in. Okay, and if I count them, I know I've got three in each group, so I'm gonna count in threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. So my answer is 15. But remember, you may have chosen a different five of those sevenths. You could have chosen one, two, three, four, five. You might have chosen these five. Still five sevenths, it's still 15. Okay, it's still the same number, so it's fine. Or you might have done this. You might have coloured one, two, three, four, five, left two blank. That's your there. That's five sevenths. And then you might have done the same. One, two, three, four, five, and then left two blank. That's five sevenths. One, two, three, four, five, and left two blank. That is five sevenths. They are all five sevenths, and if you count them, I still have five, 10, 15. The answer is still 15, so it doesn't matter how you shade as long as you end up with the right number. If we do it with our ninths now, um, I'm going to, I need to share this into nine. I think, looking at the bar, I think three is going to be too big, but let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, it was too big. Um, there's not enough to get nine groups in, so I'm gonna try two in a group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, perfect. Let's just double check, I'm gonna label them. I definitely am happy that I have nine equal groups. Tick, tick. I need to look at five of those now. So I want one, two, three, four, five of my ninths to be shaded in. And as before, you may have chosen a different five of those small sections, but you should have um, two, four, six, eight, ten as your answer. So you could have chosen a different five. You could even have chosen one, two, three, Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You could have chosen these five ninths. Okay, it doesn't matter as long as there's 10 squares. And you could also, you may also have shaded in one, two, three, four, five, and then left four blank because that is five out of your nine shaded. And then done the same here one, two, three, four, five, and left four blank. Again, that is five ninths and it still adds to 10. Okay, doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you've got the right answer. And finally, let's look at using a grid. So I would recommend you, um, first of all, check how many rows and columns. So one, two, three, four, five, I've got five going this way, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven going this way. Now I'm dividing by seven, so be careful here. I want to share it by seven. What do you think is going to be easier to share five rows by seven or to share seven columns by seven? The seven columns are going to be easier, aren't they? Because I can make seven groups easily here. Let's prove it. There's seven groups there, each with one square in. So if I think about just the top row, there's my, so that looks like a six there. There's my five sevenths in that top row shaded. 
okay I just looked at the top row there's seven in that row if I shade five of them in that's five sevenths and I can see all the other rows beneath it are exactly the same which means I'm just going to repeat below and below and below and below and there we have five sevenths of our shape completed okay you may have decided to colour one, two, three, four, five, leave two. One, two, three, four, five, leave two. One, two, three, four, five, leave two. You would have ended up with exactly the same image as before, wouldn't you? And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, your answer would have been 25 both ways. Now, if you had done it the other way, one, two, three, four, five, leave two, 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 one, two, three, four, five, leave two. You would still end up with 25. You've still shaded five out of every seven, but it will be a lot easier to make a mistake doing it that way. Okay, so always try and see if you can share any of the rows or the columns um, by your denominator first. So when we look at our ninths now, let's label our sides. I have five that way. I have nine that way. As I'm sharing by nines, it's going to be easier to share my top row. Okay, and I can actually, because it's nine, I can actually see that there's going to be one in every group. Let's double check. I'm treating this grid like it was a bar model. So I've got nine in my row. I want four shaded. There is my four ninths. I can see that all my rows below it are the same. So I'm simply going to repeat in the rows below. And when I count all my squares up, there's four in every row, so I can use my four times table, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. My answer is going to be 20. Okay, it would have been very hard to have done that the other way round. If you try to divide this into ninths, you can't, okay? So you could have ended up going one, two, three, four, and then leaving one, two, three, four, five uncolored. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So I'm counting five because four are coloured and five are not. One, two, three, four, five. So four of my ninths are coloured and one, two, three, four, five of my ninths are not. If I add that up, that actually adds up to 20 as well. But try and look for sharing one of your rows or your columns by the denominator first. So label the row and the column and think about whether that is in the times table of your denominator. OK, so have a go at all those questions on your worksheet now. Um, pick the fractions that are challenging for you and um, use all the strategies that I have taught you here. If you can use your times table, then go ahead to using that. But maybe if you're still learning, you're not 100% confident, give it a guess with your times table and then use the methods I've showed you to check whether you're correct or not. So I hope you've learned something new today about non-unit fractions and how you find fractions of a, amounts, of sets of objects or of images. So have a go at the worksheet now and good luck. If you've enjoyed this lesson video, then please have a look at our website where you can sign up for access to loads more free resources to support maths learning in Key Stage 2. So that's years 3 to 6. I started doing these lesson videos in response to the school closure. We already have a Year 6 app on the market, but the Years 3 to 4 and 5 are all being designed especially to help you with your homeschooling so if you want to keep up to date with more resources as I make them then check out the website and you'll be able to sign up at um, 
pocketprivatetutor.co.uk. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, where I'm posting loads of different puzzles and tips and tricks um, that you can have a go at with your family at home. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson.